the second attempt at an intro here. Now we're a little more relaxed. <laughs> we're, we're trying to be too stiff. We got to be ourselves. How you doing, man? Speaking of intros, where, where is my intro? <laughs> <laughs> I forgot again. Yeah, yeah. We'll be right back with the start of today's show. <laughs> intro. And now it's time for Tech Tuesday, featuring advice you want to hear from the man that has true passion for his job. Do you want it done right? Or do you want it done right now? Other technicians can't wait to ask him a question. He's not your mom. He's the star of Tech Tuesday, Chuck Mats. I did. I forgot it again. Oh my gosh, I apologize. <laughs> um, We've got quite a bit to talk about today. Welcome to the show, everybody. And we are going to finish up with a beautiful ride segment. And uh, we've got quite a bit of work for you, too. Yeah. And there's a reason for that. We're going to learn from my mistake. We're going to learn from my experiences. Again, more on that in just a minute. Let's do a follow-up to last week. One of the questions, which I think we get a lot, actually, and I think it's good to actually show a hands-on why and how it varies. When you fill up your car, the miles till empty always changes, and it's never what it was when you first got the car because now it's monitoring your most recent driving habits. I went to Pittsburgh and back. I got four different fill-ups I want to share with you, and then we'll come back and get into all of this. You can see before I fill up, I'm at 95 miles till empty. And you guys might remember last week on Tech Tuesday, one of the viewers wrote in and said, you know, every time I fill up my car now, my miles till empty is never as high as it was when I first got my car. Well, remember, after each fill up, it resets itself and it's predicated on your most recent driving habits. Yeah, mine's going to be skewed just a little bit. I'm filled up now. I was doing a lot of city driving. I drove a little bit of highway to get to Costco's to fill up my car. And now mine says 321 miles till empty. So here's what I'm going to do for you guys today. Again, showing you the variance after each fill-up. You're going to see how they change drastically on my previous driving style. I'm going to Pittsburgh. I'll fill up before I go on track. And actually, on track, I'll show you what kind of gas mileage we get during our track sessions. I think that'll be kind of fun. And then when I get home and fill up again, I'll show you again how that mileage till empty varies after each fill-up. Thanks for joining us today. Okay, we're about a mile from the track and we, ha we had to fill up. Show you more why later. Okay, so look now, just from driving, we were about a half a tank and refilling up, we're at 439 miles now till empty. That's how that varies. Wait till you see what it is when we get off the track. Wait till you see, <laughs> wait till you see what our, our mileage is actually on the track. I'm kind of curious myself, that'll be a lot of fun. Thanks for joining us. Having fun sharing this episode with you guys. Take a little peek and see where we're at, Ryan. Okay, so we used not quite a half a tank of gas. It says 154 miles till empty. Let's, uh, let's toggle over to the uh, gas mileage. Average fuel economy, 6.5 miles to the gallon. Wow, these Corvettes are awesome. All right, go ahead and turn the car off. We're gonna fill it up, and then I'll get you a reading on how many miles till empty, because remember, guys, like we talked about this week and last week, every time you fill the car up, it resets how many miles till empty, and that varies based on your most recent driving style. And actually, when I get home, I'll fill it up one more time, and then you're gonna see in this vlog, in this trip back to Pittsburgh and back, how much it's varied, how much the miles till empty has changed based on our recent driving style. All right, Ryan's showing off for the guys at the gas station. Okay, so after that fill up, the car now says 252 miles till empty. Once we get back home after this long highway trip, yes, we refill it up. It's going to be much higher, I bet, probably closer to 400. Okay, guys, we're back from Pittsburgh. We're going to fill up one more time, and then we're going to show you how the range till empty changes. Remember, it changes every time you add gas or fill up, and that range till empty, well, it will vary based on your most recent driving habits. Yeah, I'm not sure if you guys can see that. There we are, 366 miles till empty now. We 
know you guys like to see the hands-on. I hope you get a little bit better understanding of why your miles change every time you fill up your car. It was kind of fun to share that. And how about my miles on the track? 6.5 miles to the gallon. Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. I do love this thing. I do love driving it, and I do love driving it on the track. One of the reasons that we're here in service today and Chuck's going to perform a number of services for a number of reasons. Yeah. Well, are we going to show them why GM don't recommend this car for the track? For the non-Z51 cars yeah. that I have? Yeah, you, we, can, we can show that. Yeah. And that's the thing. I, I do want to share with the audience through my experiences and sometimes my mistakes that I and you guys can learn from it. Uh, we had one guy send in a, a big note in a previous Tech Tuesday a couple of months ago talking about, hey, Rick, what do you do for tracking and stuff like that? And I talked about the advantages and the great value of driving my car on the track at a non-Z51. But now I've learned that I've pushed it to another level that I can no longer do what I've been doing. Well, the low speed stuff was fine. Yeah, oh, it's a blast. Yeah, in, in this car, in a non-Z51, mm -hmm. the low speed stuff's fine. The high speed right. stuff, however, yeah. Well, I went to pit race, which was high speed the first time, and I was really nervous because there was so much stuff to do there. And I didn't adhere to all the track prep stuff that General Motors talks about. If you want that PDF link down below, which I've read extensively, please check that out when you get a chance, especially if you're gonna do tracking in your Corvette. And there were some C8s out there. And there's one thing that I didn't do that caused me an issue that some of the other guys I was talking to, they did do, and I didn't change my brake fluid to high temp brake fluid. Okay. You would ask me if I was going to do that. Sure. I said, oh, no, no, Chuck, I'm not at that level. And the first time at pit race, I really wasn't at that level. Sure. You know, and I drove, and there was no brake fade, and it was fine. So second session, I'm familiar with the track. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to, and I did drive more aggressively. Mm -hmm. and, and when this first started, you was just doing low speed stuff. I know. I know. I'm, <laughs> I'm really into it. I'm not going out to compete, but I'm going out to really enjoy the car and just the art of driving that we've talked about and shared so often on the channel. So when I felt brake fade, um, it scared the crap out of me. Coming into a corner, doing about 120, brake went all the way to the floor. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, you, now you gotta worry about your line, you gotta watch the flag thing, you gotta watch the guys behind you and on the side of you, and, then you, and I got the brake issue. I started pumping the brakes, they came back. Mm -hmm. Did my turn, making sure I don't hit anybody, take anybody out in my turn. Still continued my session. We let the car cool down for about 40 minutes. Ryan went back out. He felt the same thing. I thought it was a warped rotor. Yeah. The track officials at Pitt in track night in America, they were awesome. And the guy just laughed at me and he goes, dude, you don't have a warped rotor. He no. goes, not on this car. He no. goes, you got hot brake fluid. And because it's a drive-by wire system, I'm trying to break it, and the caliper's going, eh, it's too hot, I can't hold the brakes. <laughs> um, and the car was fine, nothing happened to the car. Great session, much better session. I really enjoyed it. I'm going to do limited, but I am going to do more high-speed sessions. So what we're going to do today, we're going to change the brake fluid, because once that fluid boils to that point, I've now compromised Absolutely. the and properties. Absolutely. you've glazed the pads over. And oh, yeah, I forgot you, about that. You've, you've done a bunch. Okay, we'll show you guys. <laughs> as soon as he takes the pads off, I'll show you guys that. And then after that's done, I'm going to do something else with this car. Yeah, what are you going to do? You already know. <laughs> nice try pretending that you didn't know. <laughs> Such a great actor. That's why he's the star of Tech Tuesday. <laughs> I didn't think I was ever going to do this. My first ever Corvette. I've been a Corvette guy as long as I've been in the business and I got in the car business, committed that I was gonna focus and be a Corvette specialist. People said, oh no, you can't be in the business selling only one car. I said, no, I wanna do that. I wanna know this car. I wanna interact with the customers. I wanna build relationships and I wanna have fun. But I've never had my car. I actually went to order a car in 03 and then the twins came and I ended up getting a Suburban. So I've had many missed opportunities and some of it was just life. I just couldn't afford a Corvette, but I was always committed to you guys. I've been at many different Corvette clubs. I've been at shows all across the country for 26 years. Finally, it was my time. I get my car. And I just, what did I say when I first got the car? I'm going to put 100,000 miles on the yeah. car. I'm going to probably, my intention, I'm going to just, I'm going to, I'm just going to keep it forever. <laughs> I'm going to keep it forever. I'm very sentimental about that stuff. Even when the 2023s came out, I kind of screwed my head up because I'm thinking about the 50th anniversary that I never got. And this has got the 2023 70th anniversary. I'm like, oh, man, I'd love to have that on my car. So there you go. You guys know where I'm heading with this. I'm trading the car. And I never thought I would do that. Um, I'm gonna reorder the car, but I'm gonna change a couple of things. 
am I going to stay with the same color? We're going to do another vlog on that. I'm going to go through the full spec and you know why I'm changing a few different things, uh, which may even be the color. And then we'll have like a little price pack too, if you guys can guess one of the new options that I'm going to put on the car that I didn't do the first time around. Actually, I'm adding two new options. One wasn't available when I ordered my car, but I am going to add two options for sure. So that's going to be an upcoming vlog, a little price pack just to involve you guys as we always do and have fun. But my experience at pit race, I know now that I'm not able to drive to my abilities and the car needs more capabilities. Yeah, you're at the limit of this car with what you're trying to do. No, and if I take it any further, I'm either gonna hurt myself, somebody else, or I'm just, I'm gonna really damage the car. But as I discussed this, thinking about getting another car, um, it really kind of screwed my head up. And I'm gonna pay what it takes to get the car. The allocation will be released in the November allocation. I thank my manager for allowing me that opportunity. So essentially, um, this is kind of the first announcement. The car's for sale, guys. So if you're interested, you know who to call. And it better be me. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm going to have to start all over and do some accessory stuff and things like that. So I'm uh, going to go back to my favorite uh, accessory places, Paragon, ACS Composite, um, American Hydrocarbon, and get the car back. I actually have one new accessory that I haven't put on the car yet, so we're going to wait. And I don't know if it will actually work for the new car because of coloring, so we'll talk about that too in a future vlog. So, again, longer discussion than I wanted to. i um, going to share with you uh, what you got to do when you're actually going to re-bleed those brakes. You know. Shall we get into it? Yeah, we might as well. I just, I'm more emotional right now kind of talking about this. I'm sorry. I, mean, I didn't mean to take no, up all the, no, all the camera fine. time, you know. It's just, I, and I told him first thing this morning, and I should have had a camera, but it's early in the yeah. morning. We both look like crap in the morning. And I said, hey, man, uh, I've been thinking about this. And guess what? I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to trade my car. And he's getting ready to take a bite in something. He goes, what? <laughs> what? You're going to what? I mean, it's just, I mean, it's just like a whole deep conversation, kind of like what we're having right now. Yeah. See, people are buying Z51 right now, in my opinion, almost for the wrong reason. Because it's cool, and everybody's getting it, and it's better for resale. Screw the next guy. Get what you want. I love, for just cruising, the non-Z51 was the right car for me. Because I'm going into tracking, it no longer is. And here's what Taj said. If you listen to what he's talking about, what the Z51 is, then that makes sense for anyone that's going to take their car on the track. As Phil mentioned, the new Stingray will have the Z51 package. It includes a long list of tra track focused features like performance tires, larger brakes, electronic limited slip differential, more aggressive gearing in the transmission, additional cooling capacity, and aerodynamic content. The aero content includes additional brake cooling and a front splitter and rear spoiler that actually create full vehicle downforce and confidence-inspiring balance on the track. With more weight on the rear axle, the electronic limited slip differential is more effective than ever, giving the Stingray the optimal handling balance through every corner and the ability to put power down like never before on corner exit. The available performance traction management has been refined for greater acceleration and more consistency across a wider range of surface conditions. It's fun for me, man. I mean, I'm out there on track and just, it, it's just fun. One clip I shared with you guys on social media, somebody said, Rick, why'd you come so wide? Well, when you're in a point pass type situation, I had to come behind that guy, even though I could have passed him, I got to wait for the point. So I had to get behind him so he can see me, point me, then I shot back into my line. <laughs> Now with service, uh, you're going to show us the uh, the pads. Sure. All right. Take a look at these pads, and I think that even the guys at the track said that these are probably glazed over. Oh yeah. I think you would agree. Yep. On the non G51, they have the non high performance brake pads for tracking. Right. So you knock these pins out. Now taking the pads off of Z51 is going to be a little bit different, isn't it? Yes, it's going to be a whole lot different because okay. you can't get them out unless you take the caliper off. Okay, so this is a little bit easier. Yep. Pull these pins. This is the spring retention. I haven't seen these yet. I'm kind of curious what they're, uh, <laughs> they're going to look like. So for whomever would get this car, they're knowing that we're... Whoa. Go ahead and get right up in there. Okay. They're glazed and baked. Oh, yeah. I think they can be saved. There's still some good life left in them. What are you going to have to do? We're going to have to block sand them and see if they come back. So. Okay. 
Let's, if, if let's not, do then that. I, then I got to get new pads. If not, yep. right? Okay. So the next guy that would get this car, that's why I'm doing the proper services, um, oil change, top mm -hmm. off the fluid again. I'm just going to put the regular brake fluid in. I'm not going to do high temp now because I'm not going to do any more high speed tracking like that until the new car comes in, which probably won't come in until late December, but more than likely it'll be a January arrival. So. All right, kinda... well, let's see if we can bring these back. Okay, buddy. Okay, so that block sanding is a lot of work, but yeah, yeah. it but works. You, yeah, you can see we, we have pad <laughs> material again now instead of baked on pad material right. and crystallized. So. All right, thanks for doing yeah, that, Chuck. they did come back. Okay, good. You like doing the pads on the non Z51s. Well, yeah, they're a lot easier to get in and out. Right. Like I said, on Z51, you have to actually take the caliper loose from the vehicle. Now, when you take the caliper from the vehicle, do you have to disconnect the battery? Not to take, it's only when you get into the open the hydraulic system do you have to do that. Okay, so well, guys that would take their calipers off and paint them, then right. you really need it. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to disconnect the battery because you have to in order to, uh, to bleed, it, yeah. bleed and drain the fluid and replace it. So we're going to share that with you guys today as well. Yeah, anytime you open the hydraulic system on these cars, you have to disconnect the battery. And I hope I'm not boring you guys with my experience on trading this car and getting another car. Uh, I'm going to have a more detailed conversation. We need to so you can get a little bit more of my mindset and what I intend to do with the car as far as, you know, options and spec and all that kind of stuff and color uh, because that's been a huge, huge conversation. But uh, the decision I've already made and I told you uh, I did it for the right reason for the next for the next spec. I can't even believe that I'm actually talking about this. I had no intention of ever getting another car. I had no, and actually when I got this car, I ordered it so methodically. I never, never thought that I'd be <laughs> taking the freaking thing on the track. Then I did a little autocross. And then I got a little this, and I did a little that, and then that, here we go, baby. Here we go. <laughs> let's head to the back, shall we? Okay, let's do the back. That's my cue to move. Now you don't think the back will be as bad as the front, right? I wouldn't think so, but we're about to find out. What's yeah, that? the backs are just as bad. Are they really? Wow. When we put her through her pieces. I don't know about shaking bake, but you was definitely baking. <laughs> <laughs> well, as you can see, we're to the right rear now. You didn't discriminate. You got all four corners. <laughs> so. I'm surprised they're as bad as they are to uh, the back. Yeah. Wow. But okay. we'll see if we can block sand them and bring them back. All right. Okay, he's uh, over there working. And just in case you wondered, Got about 23,000 miles on the car now and don't really intend to drive it much more until the new car comes in. A uh, couple events at the National Corvette Museum, but no tracking or anything like that. So if somebody actually buys it in advance and commits to the car before my new car gets here, then I'll damn near just come to the point and actually park the car for you. A lot of thought process uh, for the new spec that I'm excited to have that conversation with you guys. Anytime I can sit here and just talk about this car or ownership of this car, it really is enjoyable for me. It comes from the heart. It comes from the gut. Oh, you're putting the All Seasons back on. So thank you guys for watching and listening. I do appreciate that very much. Yeah, All Seasons going back on. I love the All Season tires for daily driving. Absolutely, man. What are you doing? <laughs> getting ready to do the oil change. Okay, we're getting ready to do oil change. Uh, I'll show you the DCT filter when it comes out. And then when we get to the point where we're going to drain the brake fluid, again, remind you how important it is to disconnect that battery. Oh, by the way, you said, and you had said, as a reminder, customers are supposed to tell you if there's the two extra quarts in the tranny fluid. Yes. You've been forewarned. Well, I know because I put it in. Oh, so. yeah, that's right. right. Never mind. Glad you reminded me. <laughs> hey, I'm here to help, buddy. Uh-huh. Yeah, you can see who's doing all the work. <laughs> it is very important. Yes, it is. Oh, this is where it's going to scatter and splatter? Oh, man. Okay. I'm, I'm glad you you're what. mic'd up today. I'm staying back. Yeah. <laughs> Taking the oil drain plug out of one of these is like opening up a full blast faucet. It's kind of nice to be technical with you guys filming today's episode. Chuck is mic'd up, I'm mic'd up, and it gives us an opportunity to kind of walk around and just have a conversation with you guys. Again, this is a much longer vlog than we intended. I appreciate you watching and listening and sharing in the moment, discussion, information, and learning, again, from my mistakes and learning some of the things that you need to do in maintaining your car. Look at you there, I hit black gold. Yeah, black gold. <laughs> We've talked about the oil change thing. It's a big controversy and confusion for C8 uh, over the last year and a half or so. Uh, it's important to know that 
you have up to two years after new purchase or 7,500 miles. Or if your oil life percentage gets down, or if you track your car, you're gonna to wanna to change the oil sooner. So a lot of that determines on you and how often you're gonna do that. And I've done mine uh, quite often. I'm gonna get a full service history record printed out for the next owner of this car. It's gonna be an honor to, uh, to give you a send off, Pat, on my car. <laughs> As we can see, it's pretty dark. It needed change. Well, I know it needed change. I know you needed change. I did two track days. I know. We're going to show the tranny filter. Just showing the oil, too. Okay. So I have maintained it properly, and I've Absolutely. done whatever it needed you you just do, because, you know, I had every intention of keeping this car forever. Yeah, you're changing up the servicing on this car to go with your driving habits. And this service that you're doing right now, let's be honest, this is not cheap. No. You know, so I could be some... Well, I'm not going to use those words on camera, but I could be that. I could be that guy. You could be that guy, and just pass it on, and then have you do it at a used car inspection, and pass on the cost to the dealership. Sure. No, I'm doing it now. It's my responsibility. It needs to be done now, and I know that it, it's it's done for the next owner. Sure. So I'm not shortcutting. No, you've enjoyed the car. You've and you're taking care of the car. So this whole service is going to be somewhere between eight nine hundred dollars. I forget what it is. So that's why it's important to maintain this stuff properly, guys. And yeah, and we've had that discussion. I don't think you can over overprotect or over service anything, especially this new car. No, that's a good point. You can't over service the car. That's a really good point. No. All right, let's go back to the DTC filter now. Okay. There she is. I think it's important to note too, we got a couple of guys on the channel that watch that have the ability not to discard that, but really truly have the ability to work on their own car. And it's sure. important to remind them that when they get the new DCT filter, it comes with a new O-ring and new screws that they have to use because those are a one-time use only. Correct. Not only that, but they uh, have thread lock on to keep them from backing out. So. Okay. Oh, good. All right. It's important to know that. I know some of you guys out there work on your car. Thought we would share that just as a quick reminder as well. All right. You might want to stand back now. We're about to get a little messy. Okay. Oh, wow. Now that might seem like a lot of fluid coming down now there, but Nate and I've measured it. It's anywhere from four to six ounces. I don't even think it's that much. Yeah, I don't think so either. Yeah, I, I was gonna say probably three. I mean, yeah. it's, yeah, it's minimal. So. This should have been a Coffee with Conti episode today. All right, man. here's what all's in this kit. You get the new filter. Okay. You get the new Play-Doh ring. You get the new drain plug O-ring, okay. and you get new bolts. Okay. So everything's in the kit to replace this filter. I want to see what the old filter looks like. <laughs> Do I? I want to see what the old filter looks like. I'm getting ready to pull it now. Okay. There's the old one. I got a camera light on it too, so you can see it a little bit better, but I mean, we expected it to be dirty. You talk about how important it is for this to get the debris out of the dual clutches in that transmission. Correct. This is the first line of defense for this transmission. Right. That's why they want to, you to extend the first service out to close to 7,500 miles without going over as possible. Right. And if you do do it early at 2,000 or 3,000, they still want you to go back in do at it that 7,500 7, mark and do it again. Yep. Appreciate you guys watching, and I apologize. Like I said earlier, this is a little bit longer vlog than we anticipated. So if you didn't watch it in its entirety, although our audience, the watch time is just incredible. You guys really are engaged in the conversations. Come back and finish it up. We've got a great looking, uh, great looking, beautiful ride segment to finish up today's vlog. Now we're gonna get into flushing my brake fluid because I boiled it. So what do we gotta do first there, boss? Well. First thing we're going to do is take some of the panels out from underneath this so we can get to the master cylinder and the battery. Okay. Now that we've got this off, you can see here's the battery, here's the master cylinder. Now that we've got the master cylinder full, we've got to go into the computer and disable the Bruce system before we disconnect the battery. Okay, before we can deactivate the boost system, we have to disconnect the, the brake level sensor that's in the master cylinder. Okay. Now we've got that disconnected. Okay. Let's see the plug-ins out of here. Now we can continue with deactivating the boost system. We have the brake sensor, 
Brake level sensor unhooked. We have the brake boost system deactivated. Now we're going to disconnect the battery. And like everywhere before, don't take the positive cable off. I was just going to ask you. Take the negative cable off. Okay, I just get, we've talked about that so many times, but it's easy to forget. So you're going to do the forget. negative first. Well, you just have to take the negative off. You don't have to completely disconnect the battery. You just okay. got to disconnect the battery. Okay. But don't disconnect it from the power side. And since there's not a whole lot of room in there, I'm going to take a rag and put it in between the cable and the battery so that it don't make sporadic contact no, while I'm working on say, it. Because actually it just did when you were just touching it, I saw the sure. lights go on, right? Exactly. Now it can't. Which side do you want me on? Well, see, here's the, here's the deal. Okay. For everybody that's old school, we was always taught to start from the furthest point away from the master cylinder, which was always the right rear. You get right rear, left rear, right front, left front. Okay. Because usually the master cylinder set right here, so the closest point was the left front. So you start from the furthest. On this car, it's actually kind of backwards because they've got me starting on the left rear, coming to the left front, going to the right front, and then the right rear. Oh, really? So it's kind of backwards. Okay. From what we're used to. Right. So you need to bear that in mind. There's two bleeders, one inside, one inboard, one outboard. These are caps. You gotta get these caps off, make sure not to lose them because they go back on. Keeps the debris and stuff out of the bleeders so that they work properly. You can see the brake fluid starting to accumulate where it's pushing it from the front all the way through. You look real close, probably hard to see on camera. There's tiny little bubbles in there. So go up here and double check, make sure we still got, we aren't losing too much pressure. Pressure's still good. Everything's flowing. So, <laughs> when that's done, like I said, from the master cylinder back to the caliper was this line. To get the rest out of the caliper is the next line. And we should be good. All right, what were you just saying there, buddy? You don't want to leave the brake fluid yeah, the, dripped onto the caliper, so what are you going to do now? Well, we're going to get some water, because water works better than anything to get rid of brake fluid. Water's about the only thing that will work on brake fluid. And where it was running down the caliper a little bit, yeah. we've got a drain pan underneath. This is just straight water. We're gonna pour some water over this and get rid of the brake fluid. So the brake fluid don't hurt the paint on the caliper. Okay. Blow the water off. Before I move on, I'm gonna double check, make sure the bleeders are nice and snug, which they are. Okay. And we're ready to move to the next wheel, which would be the left front. So when I'm done with this procedure, it'll have all new brake fluid in it. And then as far as putting the car back together, you've gotta to hook up the battery, and then you gotta reconnect. Then we gotta do an automated bleed, make sure everything in the system's not leaking and then reactivate the brake boost. Okay. We've got a lot of episodes coming for you guys on the channel. One's gonna be kind of a sit down with Chuck and I, and this Tech Tuesday segment has been great for us, for our business. So I'm gonna have Chuck kind of talk to you guys and how Tech Tuesday has affected his business, how it's affected my business. About ready to wrap it up. What do you gotta do now, bud? Okay, now that we've bled all four wheels, or calipers, we're gonna reconnect the battery, then go in and do the hydraulic test on the system. If it passes that, we're gonna plug the level sensor back in and do an auto bleed, automated bleed on the system with GDS2, and from there we should be good to go. Okay. The computer's now communicating with the car, the computer's applying the, the brakes and the electronic valves and stuff in the system, which is applying brakes. Actually, I can hear it. Yeah, yeah. yeah I can hear it, yeah, I can hear it. Then we're going to double check, make sure we don't have a leak anywhere. Harvey, no problem. Yep. That back one, right? I don't know. We're going to see. I'm trying to tighten it one more time, and if not, then if not, then we need a new caliper, right? More than likely. Now we've got a leak. Nothing to what we've did. Just cracking that bleeder loose, it won't reseal. 
And if we can't get it resealed, I can't get it the rest of the way out, we're probably going to end up having to put a caliper on it. So we'll let you guys know before the end of this vlog actually what happens, but I just wanted to close up right now with Chuck on camera, uh, thanking you for listening to this extended conversation, one that we started that will continue in future vlogs about what I'm uh, gonna do with this car as far as the replacement and the spec and the colors, and uh, my head is, is really spinning in regards to that. But thanks for being interested, thanks for the engagement. We're gonna make it like a little contest so we engage you guys into my experiences with the car, and I appreciate that very much. Thanks for uh, all the time today, Chuck. Not a problem. Next week, it's Father Chuck, as we said. So we're gonna have a little <laughs> bit more fun, but this kind of stuff and sharing these procedures so you know that they are more involved and really truly why you want to bring your car, especially when you're doing this. I know there's some backyard mechanics out there, but when you want to do this kind of stuff, you got to bring it, bring it to the dealership. Yeah, you really do. Last week, we got a lot of great compliments on the cars that we shared when we're showing off your cars in the ride segment. We're going to do it again right now. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll talk to you soon.